Dear children, a hearty welcome to Pragnadan Academy. Here, I have created a biology playlist for 10 standard students so that you can follow the biology videos under this playlist. The main aim of making these videos for conceptual understanding of the topics which help in scoring 100% marks in biology in the board exams whether it may be CBSE state or any other board and helps in writing competitive exams like Olympiads and these videos will form base to the students who are going to opt biology stream in intermediate. Now in this session I am going to discuss about introduction to the life processes. Before starting the actual topic I am going to ask you one question. What do you mean by biology? Biology is a branch of science, deals with living organisms and their vital or important processes to sustain life is called as biology. The word biology is derived from Greek word which consists of bios means living things and logos means study of. Simply we can say biology is a branch of science deals with living organisms. Now we will start the actual topic that is life processes introduction. So here the processes and the life. If you see you can observe two words here. The processes are nothing but the mechanisms which are taking place inside an organism to make the organism living is called as a life processes. If you define this life processes, the mechanisms or processes which includes various biochemical reactions taking place inside the organism to sustain life is called life processes. Under this life processes, we are going to discuss many things to understand uh, this topic from unicellular to multicellular level and how these processes are um, interrelated to each other. Okay. Although there are various life processes are taking place inside an organism and out of these which are the basic life processes which sustain life. All these things are going to discuss in this session. Okay, now let us start from the basic level. If we observe the entire universe, our solar system, our earth, we and our surroundings are made up of matter. Okay, on the basis of existence of life, very very important, on the basis of existence of life, this matter is divided into living matter and non-living matter. As you all know that this matter is consists, constitutes very tiny particles called atoms. Both the living as well as the non-living matter constitutes some common types of atoms but their compositions and the bondings between these um, atoms varies in them. Okay. If you see this classification of the living and non-living matter, the things which comes under living matter are called as living things and the things which comes under uh, non-living matter are called non-living things. Of course, you children would know this classification earlier itself. Okay, again I am going to refresh it. Okay, this living things are mainly classified into plant kingdom and animal kingdom. Under this, we will get different kinds of plants and animals under this. That means uh, simply we can classify this living things into plants and animals. But as non-living things are classified into natural type and man-made type, 
the under this natural type we can see sun soil water air minerals okay in the case of man made we can find many things um, in our daily life which are used it regularly for example table chair pen etc we have seen number of examples um, now for both living and non living things but what are the characteristic features which can differentiate living things from non living things okay children let us see here living things have birth okay this is the first characteristic feature living things have birth and they respire by inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide okay they require food for performing life activities they exhibit growth and development of the body organs they show different kinds of movements they show different kinds of movements okay and they are capable of um, reproducing young ones of their same kind and helps in increasing uh, their number okay and they will respond to specific stimulus okay and every living organism will have certain life span after that they are going to die these or the uh, main characteristic features of the uh, living things which we can differ from non living things okay from birth to death inside an the living organism so many mechanisms are performed for sustaining life these mechanisms are called as life processes and the last but not the least characteristic feature is all living things are made up of with tiny structural and functional co- units called cells which containing the living matter inside the cell that is called as protoplasm and also the cell organelles okay this protoplasm is the living matter and this protoplasm consists of both cytoplasm as well as the nucleoplasm which have certain enzymes to carry out biochemical activities to sustain life okay children such kind of uh, living matter that is protoplasm is not seen in non living things okay children i am going to ask you one question if i show you an organism and ask you whether it is living or non living out of these characteristic features which one you choose first yes everyone will choose the movement okay so for example if the organism is sleeping and it is not doing any work and it is not moving then what you will observe again we will observe the movements of the chest so and these movements are visible okay and all these movements are visible so one way or the other way we are depending on movement to find out the organism whether it is living or non living but in case of plants the plants will not move then we will what we will observe so normally first thing we will observe the color of the green leaves okay if some leaves are not green in color some plants will not have green in green leaves then what will we observe plants will grow for some time after some time but we can't see the growth at the time of the growth okay this shows that some invisible movements are taking place in plants and certain animals to make them alive such movements are called molecular movements um, which takes place at cellular level 
is this molecular movements necessary for life yes of course molecular movements are very much essential to sustain life because as we know that the living organisms are made up of the uh, cells and these group of cells having similar shape size and function forms a tissue okay and group of uh, tissues of similar kind forms an organ and different um, uh, these group of organs to f- or are organized in a certain manner to form an organ system and different kinds of organ system which are well organized in um, particular positions inside the body to form an organism okay children such kind of organization you have studied in your ninth standard itself to understand uh, the molecular movements you have to understood how cell is formed first anything in the universe made up of matter this contains indivisible parts tiny particles called atoms okay and uh, the main atoms which helps in making living matter or carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sulfur which helps in making the living matter so these atoms are called as bio atoms what you call bio atoms okay so these bio atoms combined to form bio molecules what you called as bio molecules these bio molecules are nothing but carbohydrates proteins and fatty acids bio molecules are nothing but carbohydrates proteins and fatty acids if you see the structure of this carbohydrates proteins and fatty acids all all these bio molecules are made up of with these bio atoms only carbon hydrogen and oxygen nitrogen sulfur etc okay so these bio molecules combine to form macro molecules okay so this macro molecules are the combination of um, carbohydrates proteins and fatty acids such macro molecules forms the combined to form the cell organelles okay for example if you see the structure of the cell membrane okay the cell membrane is made up of with uh, proteins and lipids that means combination of this bio molecules form the macro molecules which helps in the formation of cell organelles okay and also the formation of protoplasm the protoplasm and the cell organelles together called as cell okay so we have seen one example that is uh, the cell membrane is made up of with lipids and proteins okay so let us discuss in detail about it to understand better so we are not controlling the environment but we are under the control of environment any seasonal changes or any injury or any injury to the organism disturbs the order of organization so and it has to be rearranged by some mechanisms called maintenance processes that is um, life processes if it is not rearranged for a long time the organism will not be alive to understand this point for example a cut is happened to the body what happens first so uh, the skin opens first what will happen the skin opens then the blood will ooze out okay externally we will do so many things to stop the flow of blood isn't it but that is not enough 
to heal this part so what will happen so our body itself do some processes inside it one is the clotting mechanism okay so this clotting mechanism mainly helps to stop the flow of blood at that part and another mechanism is the healing mechanism of the cut ends of the skin okay so during this clotting and healing mechanism some molecular movements of same kind that means uh, the skin is made up of with some biomolecules as well as um, for clotting also uh, the clotting factors and uh, the fibers which are also made up of with biomolecules only so some molecular movements of the same kind um happens to organize this injured part because everything in the body is made up of biomolecules if 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 it if this kind of rearrangement is not happen what will happen so the blood will ooze out continuously and the organism will not be alive after some time okay children i hope now you understood why molecular movements are important such kind of mechanisms we can see both in animals as well as in plants these maintenance processes or mechanisms are going on inside the organisms for sustaining life is called as life processes okay these processes are seen both in unicellular as well as multicellular organisms and all these uh, uh, some of the mechanisms or nutrition respiration transportation and the movements reproduction control and coordination all these um, processes are called as or collectively known as metabolism okay so to carry out um, such kind of processes in the case of multicellular organism whether it may be plant or animals there are different kinds of organ systems are present to carry out um, different types of life processes whether the organism is doing some work or at rest these bio chemical activities are going on for or going on so here you can find so many system one is the musculoskeletal system here excretory system digestive system nervous system respiratory system cardiovascular system you can find different kinds of systems and also the reproductive system so there are different kinds of systems to carry out different kinds of life processes so for this the cells require energy continuously the energy can be obtained from outside the body of the individual which is called as food we eat okay these food are mainly carbon sourced only okay carbon sourced and um, some additional raw materials are also required to increase the size of the organisms the food we eat or complex and this complex nutrients are broken down into simple absorbable substances by a process called nutrition and it requires for this process it requires a system called as digestive system okay uh normally the simple absorbable substances are nothing but glucose amino acids and fatty acids okay but the continuous uh, energy is obtained uh, only from carbohydrate source that is glucose and the amino acids are mainly used for protein synthesis okay and it is used for growth okay so if you want uh, uh, the energy 
so whatever may be the absorbable substances that one must be converted into glucose finally so the simple absorbable substances must be finally converted into uniform source of energy that is glucose which is used for the various molecular movements needed for maintaining living structures and growth of the body okay so for this a series of biochemical reactions are taking place inside it and the common so some of the common type of reactions are the oxidizing and reducing reactions which helps in breakdown of these molecules so for such kind of biochemical reactions many organisms uh, use oxygen many organisms use oxygen okay so which helps in the breakdown of glucose and releases energy for cellular needs such kind of process is called as a respiration okay it is another uh, important life process okay it requires another system called respiratory system for acquiring oxygen for acquiring oxygen from outside to inside okay so you have seen two uh, life processes which requires two systems organ systems in the case of multicellular organisms okay children if you see these processes are occurring in different systems but respiration the cellular respiration that is oxygen is going to break down the glucose to give energy at cellular level how it happens okay oxygen is present in the respiratory system whereas the nutrients are um, present in the uh, digestive system so how it is going to reach each and every cell for this another system is required for another important life process called transportation the system required for this process is called as uh, transport system which in humans we commonly called as cardiovascular system this system helps in the transportation of nutrients so one is uh, this um, nutrients that is glucose amino acids and fatty acids from the digestive system and oxygen from the respiratory system to the cells each and every cell of the body okay at the cellular level so this oxidation of glucose is going to take place to give energy so at this process not only energy is produced but some by products are also formed which are not useful to the cells hence they are called waste products and these waste products are sometimes toxic also so they have to be removed from the body so for that uh, a process is done inside the body that is called as excretion this excretion process is carried out by another specialized system called excretory system so these ways are also transported by the transportation system to the excretory system for excretion so if you see this this transportation this transport system uh, has giving a relation to each and every system okay so how these four uh, processes are interrelated with each other okay if any one of these processes are affected then the organism is not going to be alive all these processes are interrelated with each other okay for example so nutrition is good 
respiration is good excretion is also good okay so that means the systems are working uh, very well if the transportation system is not working properly then what will happen so there is no exchange of this uh, oxygen and this um, glucose and also the waste products will not occur then the organism will not be alive the same thing if nutrition the digestive system is good the transportation system is good and also the excretory system but not the respiratory system how can we get the oxygen so again it is going to be affected okay if the respiratory system the transportation system and excretory system is okay if the digestive system is not um, working properly then what will happen will not get the absorbable substances from the food isn't it okay so again we are in trouble okay so if the nutrition transportation and respiratory system is quite good but the excretory system is not uh, good enough then what will happen so the waste products are accumulated inside the body and this causes toxic effects inside the organism and therefore the organism is not going to be alive again okay so and also there are some other uh, life processes that is reproduction and response to stimulus and uh, musculoskeletal movements all those are also present or uh, those are also some of the life processes but although we are so many life processes are um, occurring inside the body only these four processes are considered as basic life processes okay for example if you see in a patient who is admitted in icu it is an intensive care unit they will look after only for the nutrition that one is given through saline and the respiration that is oxygen oxygen is given through uh, by uh, externally and also so with the help of this uh, nutrition and oxygen what will happen the cellular respiration will occur and the cells are going to live okay and so these two are carried out by this transportation system only and after uh, excre- after all these processes the excretory products are um, coming out they will check Uh, a bag called as um, uh, u- urinary bag that is it uh, it is um, attached by a catheter to the urinary system and they will uh, check the level of the urine output okay so if the output is normal then the excretory system the kidneys are functioning uh, normally okay and uh, Uh, they will check for respiratory rate and oxygen levels and blood uh, glucose levels they will check the basic um, things only so only these four processes only helps to make the organism alive even though we are having so many life processes other um other life processes like reproduction and all so those are not necessary at this point okay i hope uh, now you will understood so what are the basic life processes okay in the case of uh, unicellular organisms so for example if you take the amoeba okay there is no certain types of systems to carry out uh, different kinds of function that is uh, nutrition okay so nutrition is simply done by this uh, simple processes that is called phagocytosis 
nutrition and also exchange of gases and excretion of waste product because the entire surface of the amoeba is in contact with that of the environment so simple diffusion is enough for taking in food okay and also for exchange of gases and removal of waste products okay this is the thing happened in unicellular organisms children i hope now you understood how the life processes which are taking place in unicellular as well as in the multicellular organisms and how these um, life processes are interrelated to each other and out of uh, many life processes we are considered only these four or the basic life processes which sustain life and in the coming sessions we are going to discuss about each and every basic life processes both in plants and animals thank you